in your travels, have you noticed a person and thought that they were a certain person that you knew, or maybe you'd, it was a movie star or someone on TV. I remember one such person that I met on a plane ride from Texas. I started talking to him and found out who he was. I noticed on his hand he had this big, beautiful ring. I had to ask. It was a World Series ring. And this man had played for the Milwaukee Braves. So I said, you know, who are the people you knew? Hank Aaron, one of them. You know, and he started naming off all these people. And I said, you know, I had a cousin that played for the Milwaukee Braves. He said, yeah, who was that? I said, Cotton Willie. He said, yeah, I know Cotton. Yeah, I know him real well. When I reached home, I told Hazel about that. But she hadn't heard of it. Hadn't heard of this great baseball player. Such is the fame, isn't it? One day you're a big star, and the next, no one knows who you are. Palm Sunday reminds us that a similar observation could be made about Jesus. His final week, on Sunday he was the hottest news in Jerusalem, as the hubbub of his donkey-mounted entrance into the city showed. By Friday, though, it was a different story. And Jesus was mounted upon the cross. By Saturday, he was yesterday's news. Yesterday's news. And as we read the gospel of today, we see Jesus as a celebrity. The people of the city came out to roll up the red carpet for him. Well, they did it in sort of a way. They used palm branches. When you walked in this morning, you walked across the palm branches. There were reasons for that. These people were forced to pay high taxes to the Roman government. They had a history of past days of glory and independence, but those days were long gone, and there seemed little prospect of revival. The scriptures, however, spoke of the Messiah. He would be a descendant of King David, who would come to redeem them, and many assumed this meant that this promised one would help the people throw off that foreign government and set them up as a mighty independent nation once again. Knowing what the people knew of Jesus, many people felt that he was this Messiah. And when Jesus made his grand entrance into Jerusalem, for the Passover feast, the crowd moved in around him and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means, please save us, but was commonly used to praise the one who enters in the name of the Lord. Shouting Hosanna, the palm branches also showed their expectations. Cross palm branches were an emblem of the Jewish independence. This symbol used on one of the most common coins back in the days of Maccabees, when Israel was an independent nation. 
We know this is true, but that is because we have the benefit of hindsight. And know that the kingdom Jesus came to bring in was not the kingdom of this world. The original Palm Sunday crowd did not realize that, however. Leading up to this time, Jesus had told his disciples that he was on his way to die in Jerusalem. At least once, they tried to turn him away from talking that way. Remember that is when Jesus called Peter Satan. Jesus made a planned entrance to Jerusalem by sending two of his disciples to get two donkeys for the journey. Jesus got the red carpet treatment in the public's eye. A superstar. One to whom they attached super expectations. Crowd, no doubt, saw Jesus rode in on a donkey, and those who knew their scriptures felt that this was from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumph and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. Yet, had the crowd been alert to that symbolism of the event, they might have remembered that the donkey not only identified Jesus with that text, but also with peace. With peace. Jesus came into the city not riding on a big horse, a transportation of choice for the conqueror, but on a donkey, a symbol of humility and peace. And compared to a war horse, even weakness. Yes, even weakness. Consider that just a few days later, Jesus was deserted by those closest to him. And that few from the crowd remained to support him. Recall that even knowing that Judas was to betray him, Jesus did nothing, not a thing to stop him. He died by public execution like a common criminal. Where is the strength in all of that? Looking back, we discover that it was the weakness of all of that that brought salvation to the world in a way that no act of super strength could ever do. The Apostle Paul, writing later to the Corinthians, said that the world would not be saved by unmistakable signs, or by wisdom, or by powerful acts. Rather, Paul said, we are saved by the foolishness of what is preached, the weakness of Christ's followers, and the folly of a Savior who lets the world nail him to a cross. Paul wrote, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are. We must remember one more thing from scripture of today. Although this was the day of the greatest human fame for Jesus, it was still an age without the new spreading technologies that we have today. And because of the number of pilgrims who had come to Jerusalem, 
for the Passover, there were apparently still some who did not know who Jesus was. For according to the report, there were some who did not know who Jesus was. For according to the report, there was people who saw all the commotion from the entry and then asked, Who is this? Who is this? The answer they received was, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. That was, however, an inadequate answer. A prophet were ones who spoke for God. And in that sense, they were correct. But Jesus was more than that. He was and is the Savior. And once we realize that, we need to turn that question around so that it is not, who is this, but who am I in relationship to Him? Palm Sunday urges us to ask that question and calls us to answer it not with the comment that famous reply people hear. I am one of your fans. But with a reply only appropriate to a Savior. I am one saved by your grace. I am one saved by your grace. Now may the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Throw the gift of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you this day with strength, courage, humility, and compassion. May you be faithful as you seek to follow Jesus. Amen.